A criminal teaches a boy how to defend himself at school. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about the 2018 psychological crime drama, The Parts You Lose. Please be aware, the video contains spoilers. What the hell's wrong with you? Stop acting like such a goddamn pussy and swing that thing like you mean it. Wesley is waiting for a school bus on a North Dakota country road. He gets on the bus and sits in the back seat. The bus passes by a group of kids who throw snowballs at it and call it the retard rocket. At the school for deaf children, they are learning how to sign the Pledge of Allegiance in sign language. One of Wesley's classmates is always bullying him by rubbing boogers in his hair, but Wesley pretends not to notice. He gets off the school bus on the side of the road and walks home through the woods. They live in a small commune. During the family dinner, Wesley's mother, Gail, reads the mortgage delinquency notice. She asks what the kids want for dinner. Wesley's sister, Amber, says she wants a crocodile for dessert. They joke about it and they seem to have a great time. After dinner, Wesley plays checkers with his mom and beats her. But it looks like his mother just lets him win in order to motivate Wesley. The next day on his way to school, Wesley notices a huge roadblock. There are a lot of police cars and an ambulance near the building. When he comes home from school, his mother says that his father Ronnie has returned home after being away for a long time. Wesley is a bit reluctant when his father asks him to hug him. The kid is far from happy to see his father, but he still hugs the man. They are getting ready for dinner. Ronnie works as a truck driver and says he doesn't know when his boss will send him on another trip. He asks Wesley to move from his seat. Over dinner, Ronnie talks about a shooting that happened nearby. It claimed four lives and made a lot of noise in the news. Gail changes the subject and says that Wesley scored 95 on the history test and made a mistake in just one question about the Battle of Saratoga. His father isn't really moved by his performance. He just manages to articulate the phrase, Well, um... Saratoga, that's a, that's a tough one. The mother asks Wesley whether he wants any more food and dubs these words in sign language. Ronnie wants her to stop doing it because the kid can read lips and wears a hearing aid and they should treat him as a normal person. He seems especially annoyed by this. Gail replies that it is easier for Wesley to understand words that way. Ronnie says that it'll be difficult for him to adapt to life in society later. Gail then asks Wesley without signing, and he nods. Ronnie contentedly says that the boy can hear just fine. The next morning, Ronnie tells Wesley that his mother is spending the night at his grandmother's in Bismarck, and that he will look after him. He gives Wesley a lunch bag. At school, when Wesley opens his lunch, the bully rubs boogers on his hair again. Wesley still doesn't stand up for himself and lets it slide. On the way home, he finds a man lying in the snow with a duffel bag. The homeless-looking guy shushes him. His hands are covered in blood, and it looks like he's been lying there for a long time. Wesley runs away from him. He calls his father for help, but the man is repairing a tractor and doesn't want to be distracted. He doesn't even understand the signs of Wesley. I don't know what that means. Can you write it down for Christ's sake? Wesley decides to run down where the man was lying, and his father follows him. When they get back to the place, Wesley sees that the man is already left. Ronnie tells his son to go home. At dinner, Ronnie asks Wesley to pass him the salt. You pass me the salt. But the son doesn't hear him. Then he tries shouting and scares his daughter by doing so. Stop! Ronnie slams his fist on the table for Wesley to feel it. In the evening, Wesley comes out of his bedroom and decides to look for the homeless man. Before leaving, he looks at his father, who is sleeping in front of the TV. Searching near the place where he first saw the man, he finally finds him. He pulls him onto a sled, ties him to the slings, and drags the man to an abandoned barn. He lays the man on the hay and covers him with warm blankets. When the man opens his eyes, Wesley shushes him. Being absolutely exhausted, the homeless man falls asleep again. He wakes up in the morning. He sees that the boy is still there. While talking to Wesley, he realizes that the boy can't hear anything and says, Don't worry, you're not missing much. When the homeless man pulls his sweater up, Wesley sees that he has a bullet wound. Wesley goes back home to take some medical supplies. At this time, Ronnie's friend in the garage asks his son about the tools, and the boy gives correct answers to all the questions. Ronnie looks at them enviously. He notices Wesley coming out of the house and shouts at him to come over and help him with the repairs. He still refuses to accept the fact that his son is deaf. Wesley gives the supplies to the man, and he stitches the wound. The man has eaten all of Wesley's fruit bars and says, You got anything else to eat around here? Besides fruit snacks. 
The TV broadcast tells about the shooting that happened earlier. While his parents are watching the broadcast, Wesley puts his dinner in a toy box. Ronnie leaves home on the pretext that he needs to meet a colleague. Wesley brings the man food and the man notes that his mom is a very good cook. Then he explains to him that he can't stay any more time here as he needs to meet a friend. He tries to get up and having failed to make even a couple of steps. They also can hear the search helicopter flying past. He asks Wesley for a favor. The man gives instructions to him on what to do. He tells him to go to a roadside cafe. Wesley leaves the man's ring on one of the trucks. The truck driver leaves the cafe with a girl of easy virtue. Seeing the ring on his truck, the trucker picks Wesley up as well. The boy hands the truck driver an envelope, but refuses to say where the man is. At this moment, a police car passes by. The truck driver says that he needs some time to arrange everything, and that it will take at least a couple of weeks. He gives Wesley a paper bag. When Wesley gets back, he passes the bag to the man. He pulls a phone out of it and tells Wesley that he will have to stay there a little longer than he expected. The boy brings him some of his father's warm clothes. Wesley watches the man exercise and tries to imitate his actions. The man approaches him and teaches him how to do pull-ups. A little later, Wesley is watching TV with his sister. When his mother comes home, she asks him about school and the bully. His father comes home with firewood in his hands. He scatters some chalks and Wesley rushes to give him a hand. But instead of carrying them, he starts to stack them up for his father to carry. Just take them all. Hey, just take them. Just stop. Stop. Ronnie is furious that the boy can't hear him. Afterwards, Wesley brings the checkers to the man. They play a couple of games and Wesley loses all of them. Feeling angry, he throws the board aside. What? Just because you're deaf, you think I'm going to let you win? You win when you win. The man orders Wesley to pick up his checkers. Wesley wants to quit, but the man tells him to come back. He begins to teach him some tricks and advises him to think carefully about the move before making it. He asks Wesley how old he is. He says that he has a daughter about the same age. He also asks about boogers in his hair. Wesley tells him about being bullied at school. The man asks him to bring a thermos and a piggy bank. He breaks the piggy bank and fills the thermos with coins, puts the thermos in a bag, and hits the metal cistern. Then he hands the backpack to Wesley and demands for him to do the same. But Wesley cannot hit hard. The man begins to scold him in order to enrage Wesley. What the hell's wrong with you? Stop acting like such a goddamn see and swing that thing like you mean it. And help him release all the anger that one needs to put into a blow. Wesley loses his temper and strikes hard. At school, Wesley is agitated. He sits in class, waiting for the lunch break. Finally, the bully approaches him at lunch. Wesley stands up unexpectedly for the bully and looks aggressively into his eyes. He recalls the man's words. Just remember what I said. Stay calm. Stand your ground. Look him straight in the eye and break his goddamn head open. The bully cannot stand the pressure and retreats in fear. Returning home, he sees his mother talking with Mr. Chamber. He sits down and Mr. Chamber tells about the robbery that took place three weeks ago. He says that four out of five robbers were captured, but one of them managed to escape. He shows a photo of the fugitive, and Wesley recognizes the man from the barn. They know that he's wounded and may not be able to move. Wesley looks out of the window and sees two agents looking at the barn from the outside. Mr. Chamber asks if he saw the man. Wesley is silent in response, and the agent asks his mother to leave them alone. He tells him a story about his neighbor, an elderly woman who adopted a baby mountain lion. When the mountain lion grew up, it killed the woman and her children and even all the cats in the house. Another agent knocks on the door and Mr. Chamber leaves. Later, while playing checkers, he notices that the man is missing a finger on his left hand. The man tells him that a tiger bit the finger off. He learned how to track and hunt after it happened. And later, he killed the tiger and clenched its heart in the fist so hard that it turned into a ruby, which he put in the ring. All tigers are afraid of him now. Wesley falls asleep in the hay, but the man wakes him up and tells him to go home so that his parents do not rush to look for him. On the way to school the next morning, Wesley paints his finger black to look like his new friend. He teaches the man the Pledge of Allegiance in sign language. They have fun and play like father and son. When Wesley comes to pick up the ball, he doesn't notice that the sheriff is peering through the barn window. The man grabs him, covers his mouth and pulls out a gun, but the sheriff leaves. Later in the evening, Wesley is going going to the barn, but his father notices him. Where are you sneaking off to? 
The drunken father grumbles that nothing in the house works well, neither the tractor nor the TV, and he cannot fix them. He says that his father used to fix everything with blows. He starts hitting the TV, and then he kicks it, and yells at his son, asking where he's going. The next morning, Wesley brings toilet paper to the barn and tries to leave quickly. The man stops him and sees bruises on his face. He asks, Can the school do that to you? Wesley does not answer huh? and leaves silently. Hey. The man realizes that it was Wesley's father. The mother examines the bruise. Ronnie lies about it, that Wesley happened to approach him while he was punching the TV, so he accidentally elbowed him. At dinner, Ronnie says that he will take his son fishing, but Wesley doesn't understand him without sign language. Then his mother translates what his father said. He agrees to go fishing, although his eyes show concern. Later that evening, Ronnie is having a drink at the bar. When he goes outside to urinate, a man approaches him. Can I fucking help you? Having received a call from the sheriff, Wesley and his mother arrive at the hospital and see Ronnie in a hospital bed badly beaten. At dinner that evening, Wesley finally sits in his favorite seat, the one that Ronnie kicked him out of. After dinner, he comes to the barn. The man tells him that when he was roughly the same age as Wesley, his father bought horses. He had to take care of them, but he wouldn't allow him to name them. One day, the barn burned down and insurance paid for all of it. His father figured it would be easier to let them go if they hadn't known their names. Falling asleep, the man muttered that he would take Wesley with him and that they could live together with his daughter, taking care of the horses. In the morning at school, the kids learn a new phrase in sign language, I'm going on a trip. I'm going on a trip. Wesley closes his eyes and imagines himself taking care of the horses on the farm with the barn man and his daughter. When he visits his father in the hospital, he finds two investigators showing a photo of the man for identification. Later that afternoon, the man reveals that there is a snow grader coming by more frequently. Sometimes it pulls to the side of the road and stops in front of their house. Wesley wakes up at night and notices the flashing lights of police cars and the spotlights of a helicopter. The next day, the man says that the grader never passed all day. He asks if Wesley had told anyone about him and says, If I find out that you are lying, I swear to Christ, boy. Wesley takes the backpack and comes to the barn. The man, as usual, asks what he brought for dinner. Wesley is confused. What are you doing? What's wrong? The man grabs his backpack, but Wesley won't let it go. The backpack opens, and a thermos of coins falls out of it. Well, I'll be damned. There is hope for you yet. The man tells Wesley to be ready the next night. The next evening, Wesley packs his toys in a bag. Leaving home, he goes to his sister and says in sign language that he's going on a trip. They play checkers with the man, and Wesley finally wins. The truck driver calls and tells him to come out. The man gives Wesley the checkers board and says, I wouldn't want you to lose that. He says goodbye to the boy, but Wesley is shocked. He thought they were going together. Wesley, being desperate, pronounces a word for the first time. No. He grabs the man and doesn't let him go. The man tries to explain it, but Wesley won't hear him. The man is forced to rudely push the kid away. He tells him to get out. Wesley runs out of the barn, and a policeman grabs him, and Wesley drops the checkerboard. Sitting in a police car, the boy sees how Mr. Chambers orders the assault. Wesley notices the truck driver in another police car. The man starts shooting, and they kill him. Wesley tries to scream in grief, but he can't make a sound. The next day... He finds a checkers board filled with money near the barn. On top of it, there lies the man's ring. When he comes home, he sees his father. Wesley doesn't afraid him anymore. Why don't you come over here and give your old man a squeeze? He condescendingly approaches unhappy and angry man and hugs him. Wesley goes to his room. He sits in his bed and puts the ring on his finger. This was the recap of the movie, The Parts You Lose. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can also watch other reviews on the channel by clicking on this pictures. See you soon.